All right, so I'm going to show you how to operate your ramp door. You're going to use the black oval key into the key lock. You're going to unlock the door, grab hold of it, the handle. Simply pull the ramp door down. It's currently attached to the cables. Now if you wanted to use this in the ramp position, you would simply remove both cables. Then the door goes down to the ramp position. Now to use this as the patio, simply raise the ramp door up slightly. Release the pins for the stabilizer legs. And reinsert the pin in the top. And now, at this point, you can also reattach the cables for safety. And then you can pull the pin on the leg adjusters and set them down to ground level. Reinsert the pin. Then we're going to open up the ramp gate. Lock those into place. Then you can take your ramp entry steps and also lock those into place. And each leg on these steps are independently adjustable. Simply remove the pin and find where the foot is going to be most stable. And reinsert the pin. Again, that's on each side. You can take the stabilizer brace, bring it up to the screen wall. Once you raise this stabilizer brace, then you can insert your assist handle. We come over to this side. You're going to grab hold of the gate and pull it towards the end. You need this notch here to align with this. All right, so we're going to line up this notch with this pin. And then you can swing the gate over. And then again, we're going to line up this notch with this pin here. Please swing the gate over. Line your snap down there. And there you are. All right, in your uh, side ladder, to gain access to the roof, uh, weight rating is going to be 250 pounds. And to use the ladder, simply remove the pins, lower the ladder, and then reinsert your safety pins on each side. And then you can use the ladder. Next over here, I'm going to talk about your fuel center. So this is your gas pump. This fill towards the rear of the camper 
is going to be for your uh, gas pump. Gas fill further towards the front of the camper is going to be for your generator. You do have a gauge and a switch here. This switch on the bottom is your tank selector, so that way you can select your gauge between generator tank or your fuel dispense tank. Then this switch up on top is going to be your fuel pump on off switch. You do have instructions right down here. To start the fuel pump, press the switch twice. To stop the fuel pump, push the switch once. It will automatically shut off after five minutes of not being used. Then down alongside the bottom here, this drain is going to be for your galley tank or your gray two tank as it'll show up on your monitor panel. All right. And down here below the slide room, you're going to have your drain outlet for the black water and gray water tanks. Just up higher along the frame line, see the red uh, line, the black valve on with the quarter turn handle, that is going to be your fresh water tank drain. Then as we come around to the front of the slide room, you see your drain handles right there, again for the black water and gray water tanks. They are color coordinated, so hopefully there's no mixing that up, which one is which. Then right down here, you do have your low point drains. Blue is for the cold water line, red is for the hot water line. Moving up here, this is going to be your water heater. It is a tankless water heater. Uh, just a few things to note about it. You have your main power on off switch right there. And you do have a replaceable fuse there as well. Once this switch is on, you will use the control panel located inside the bathroom to set your temperature and turn it on and off again from inside. The light out here simply has a switch on the bottom to turn that on and off. This simply is a vent for your fresh water tank so that way uh, air can escape while you're filling. This is your power cord, 50 amp service, uh, 45 feet long, and that goes with the camper. Then you have your water hookups here. You do have a hatch at the bottom, so that way you can run water lines and such through into this compartment without leaving the door open. This connection is the flush kit for your black water holding tank. And this will be your main water line connection here. Now a neat thing about this system is that you only have the one connection here, but you can do everything that you need to do simply by turning these valves according to what you're trying to do with the water. So for dry camping, using the water from your fresh tank via the pump, simply turn these valves according to this one. To fill your fresh tank, turn the valves according to this diagram. For normal use under city connection, have the valves according to this diagram here. To winterize your camper, you can use the top right diagram. And then to sanitize the system, you'll use the lower right diagram. You do also have satellite and cable connections and you do have an outside shower with both hot and cold water and that is on the quick connect system so this will simply slide into there and you have this little release collar that must be slid rearwards to remove the water hose you do have also an external water pump switch here you will also have one inside on your uh, touch screen panel your propane tanks here 
They are both the 30 pound or seven gallon tanks, however you like to say it, but they are both full, ready to go. The only shutoff for the propane is gonna be directly on top of the tanks themselves. And then your LP regulator here has a built-in automatic changeover feature. So this system will initially draw from whichever side this little arrow here is pointing to. So right now we're drawing off at the front tank. And if, for example, you are running the furnace at night and this first tank happens to run out, it will internally switch over to draw off of the second tank. And this little indicator on here will go from green to red, simply letting you know that the first tank had run out. Now, if you want to, you can come out here and manually rotate this dial over and as long as you have LP in this second tank, which is indicated again by this arrow, and that indicator would go back to green, simply letting you know that this tank still has LP in it. Next, we're gonna talk about your landing gear controls. You do also have controls on the touchpad inside. You will have more control from the touch panel inside than you have out here. To turn on the system, push and hold the up and down arrows for several seconds, then let go. When the green light comes on, that means that your panel is on, and activated. When the green dot is blinking, that means that the landing gear is in use or in process, that the panel is thinking. And pushing auto level, will automatically level the camper. Pressing the hitch height button will raise or retract all of the rear jacks and it will also raise the front set of jacks to the last left height from where you disconnected. So it will remember the position that your truck uh, was unhooked at from, uh, from the camper. Then you also have retract all so retracting all will retract all the jacks. It is recommended that you be hooked up to the truck before pressing the retract all. And also if there is ever a fault in the system, the only way to clear the fault and reset the panel is to press the retract all. Now if you cannot get hooked up to the truck but still need to reset your panel, that is okay. Although it's not ideal, you can press retract all while not connected to the truck. These up and down arrows here will only control the front set of landing gear. So if you want to bring up the rears, you need to either press hitch height or use the control panel uh, inside to bring up specifically the rear jacks. And for ease, they do have printed out instructions on this uh, compartment door here that give you each and every instruction on how to use your external panel. Okay. Underneath the cap here, you do have a storage compartment. You have two folding tables, a plastic latch. Right here is going to be your generator compartment. Latch that door up out of the way. This right here is gonna be your generator exhaust. And then you can start the generator from outside here or from inside on your touch panel. They do have service information and also replacement numbers for your air filter, oil filter, and oil capacity. Also what weights of oil to use and what temperature range. This right here is going to be your oil fill the dipstick is attached to the cap. Your oil drain is going to be this valve right here. And then the oil filter, you can barely see it in between there, but that is accessible from underneath the camper. You do have two back feed prevention breakers over here by your start stop switch. And if either of these breakers trip due to a uh, back flow of energy. The generator will stay running, but it will no longer transfer power into the camper. And then with the start-stop switch here, 
the stop half of the switch, the bottom half, will also be to prime your carburetor. We'll start that here. So you just want to hold that for about five or ten seconds. that up and next down here you just have a small storage area where you do have your hydraulic reservoir um, when you do check levels you want to check the levels with everything retracted because um, if you try and check the levels with uh, the landing gear down and everything like that the oil is going to be dispersed throughout the lines, giving you an inaccurate reading in the reservoir. All right, then in your battery compartment right here, obviously you do have your battery. You do have space enough for two batteries, if that's the route you choose to go. Um, you do also have these larger cables. So those are gonna be your main converter cables. These smaller cables here, those will be for your solar connection. Now up on top here, this is gonna be your solar controller. Not really anything you have to do with that. It's more or less there just for your observation. You do have two threaded dials that you can turn either in or out, and those actually control your main two slide rooms. So if you have uh, one of those valves closed, it will prevent one slide room from coming in. So if you were parked up you know, up against like a tree or a building and you didn't want one side of the slide rooms to come out, you could simply close off the valve for that corresponding slide room and that would prevent one of those slide rooms from going out. You do also have a battery disconnect key here. This is in the connected or the on position Turning the key and removing it disconnects the battery, preventing anything inside from drawing power down on the battery when you don't want that. But for the most part, you will want to leave that connected. Usually only disconnect that during storage when it's not going to be used and not going to be plugged in. Then also up along the top, you do have the, uh, the pre-mount section if you were to ever get the LCI tire link that's a tire pressure uh, monitoring system and a uh, little monitor box would get plugged right into there and then you do also have a switch here um, which will allow you to use uh, you know a lithium battery because the charging sine waves are different from lithium uh, to AGM batteries or lead acid so right now this is a lead acid battery in here so we have that towards the lead AGM side. If you were to ever use lithium, you'd want to make sure that you switch that to avoid doing damage to your batteries. In the next compartment here, you do have motion activated light inside the storage compartment, and you also have your inverter. Now that is a uh, passive pass-through power inverter, so you don't have to worry about sending two power sources through your camper at once doing damage to your electrical. Um, now the inverter that takes power from your battery and turns it into uh, 120 house power so you can use uh, outlets and things like that. This inverter will run your refrigerator, your televisions, and uh, just a couple outlets in each room. So it actually does quite a bit. If you are going to be running on inverter power uh, a lot, I would recommend using a two battery setup just because it if you're using a lot, it does have a significant draw on the battery. Then you do have the television right here, and that has a cover to prevent uh, the screen from getting scratched. Then right here, you do have your furnace vent. Uh, obviously, when that uh, furnace is running, it'll get very hot, so please be careful. You have external outlets. And then right below on the camper you do have a LP quick connect port so if you had a uh, camp grill with a quick connect fitting 
you could plug right into there and that would draw off your main LP tanks, uh, preventing the need for carrying extra little propane bottles with you. Next over here, you do have your entry steps, and these steps are very easy to operate. Uh, the main thing is you just want the entry door open about as far as it will go to avoid catching these uh, side flanges on the screen door. So all you have to do is simply grab any of the steps, and raise that up, twist your uh, lock handles, make sure that's in place, then release that handle, and that will hold that in place. Now you can simply close the door in front of that. Once the door is closed, then you can fold the handle in front of the door for travel and extra safety. Also, always remember to lock both the handle and the deadbolt lock on the doors when you travel to prevent the door from popping open accidentally. So these vents right out here, these are going to be your uh, refrigerator access vents, more or less a maintenance free area. Um, you can remove these panels with a flat blade screwdriver simply here and here. Turn the, each one of those vertically and you can get your uh, fingers into the vents there. Pull out the top first and the bottom is simply held in by four pins so those will simply just uh, come out. Um, really the only time that you need to get back there is maybe for an annual spring cleaning. Make sure that all the bugs have been removed out there. There's no colonies of ladybugs. Uh, hiding back there, sitting on the burner assembly. Um, other than that, that's a pretty maintenance-free area. And coming over here, uh, you do have your two lighted outdoor speakers right up on top. Um, and again, the door, steps, everything, it's going to operate exactly the same way that the, uh, uh, the front operates. And then um, you do also have right up here, is one of your garage vents. You'll notice that there is one on the other side of the camper as well, and those handles are located inside the garage to operate those. Okay. Now on your rear garage doors, you do have this safety lock, and the doors can simply be slid off to the side. Now when you want to open the doors to get uh, a vehicle inside, simply pull these uh, retention strings here and then swing the doors off to the side and that will allow you to drive a vehicle up into the garage area and then right down here is your garage vent you do want to squeeze the handle and then rotate these can be rotated either forwards or backwards, depending which way the air is coming from, so we can scoop more fresh air and bring that inside the garage, uh, especially if you have a uh, vehicle with a warm engine and you want to get rid of all those fumes. You do have one vent down here, and you also have another vent uh, towards the front of the garage on the upper right-hand side. All right. Here you have your outlets, one for the washer, one for the dryer. Then right down here, you do have your water line hookups and also your drain hookup for your washer. Uh, this would also drain into the gray two tank if you do have a washing machine connected. Right down there by the floor is going to be a furnace vent and then you do also have another outlet here as well. This switch is going to be for the lights and this is the, uh, basically the thermostat that tells your control panel uh, what the temperature is back here for your rear AC. Uh, television, that's pretty straightforward. Um, you do have a remote control for that, which we do have uh, inside uh, the kitchen right now. And here you have your bed lift switch. This will control not only the seats, but the bed itself. Um, first, we are going to lower just the seats and we're just gonna press the down button here. Now you can fold these chairs flush to the wall. So simply remove the pin here. You're going to have one on the other side as well. Okay. 
once both of these pins are removed, it does take a little bit of playing with it, but what we're gonna do is we're going to push the chair up and bring it out ever so slightly, and that will allow us to fold the chair again flush with the wall. Again, that can be done for both sides or just one. Now we're going to bring it back up and continue to lower the seats and uh, show them in the uh, chair position. back over to our switch and continue to lower the chairs. Before we get too far we should probably let down our support legs. They just have a small detent button on the back that must be depressed before you can swing the leg down and then it will latch into position. And once the chairs are down, you can either use them in the chair position or you can fold these forward. Again, flipping out the support leg. And then you are able to use this as another bed. Just like that. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, raise the chairs up and we're going to use the, uh, the seats here to take the pressure off the bed so we can lower the bed. So we have four pins, safety pins, that do need to be removed, one on each of the four uh, arms. So we're going to raise uh, up again the chairs to take the pressure off the bed and then we can lower them both down together. Now that the chairs are all the way up, we're going to remove the safety pins from the bed. I'm also going to swing our support legs back up just for the time being. And 
now you can lower the chairs and the bed comes with it. See the bed stops here, then the chairs will keep going down. Uh, if we had the supports down, it would go uh, to the supports. Otherwise, it'll just go to the uh, to the bottom of the, the, the room. And you do have you do have uh, a couple ladders back here. The shorter ladder will be used to get to this bunk. The taller ladder. Will get to be uh, or will be used to get up to the loft from the living room. And your microwave here, um, you do have all the popular buttons for popcorn, and uh, you do also have convection cook on the microwave as well. So you have these grills here, which again can be used for uh, cooking on the convectional setting. On the microwave, uh, when using the uh, microwave uh, on you know, normal or regular microwave, be sure to remove these uh, grill grates, or uh, you will see a nice little fireworks display inside your microwave. Next, we have your oven here. Um, you do have light switches for the panel lights and also for the oven light itself. Now the four outside dials, those will be for each one of the burners. And to ignite the burner, first you want to make sure that your propane is turned on. Then simply uh, push in the burner that you want to ignite and rotate that over. And then you can adjust your flame position from there. To light the oven, it will be very, very similar. Let's turn off the light, hopefully uh, reducing the glare. But we're going to turn the oven to the pilot setting. And then we're going to push and hold that in. This process can take several tries and up to 30 seconds. You see the pilot light ignited down in the bottom. After the pilot has been on for several seconds, then you can turn the oven up to whatever temperature you need. Voila! Then every time you turn the oven off, that will also extinguish the pilot light, so you will have to reignite it every single time you want to use that. Next over here, you have your packet of owner's manuals. And over here you have all of your remotes. You have one for each of the four televisions, one remote for the sound bar, one remote for the fireplace, and one remote with uh, a mountable holder. This one will be for your fans up on the ceiling. Simply push the power button and it will open the fan. From there on the remote, you can adjust your fan speed you can set it to uh, turn on at a certain temperature. And then to turn it back off, simply push the power button. That will turn off the fan and close the lid. Next here, we have your refrigerator. And you only have three buttons. Uh, first one is going to be the power button. That's your on off. Middle button here, that will be to uh, select what uh, system you're using, whether it's uh, 110 electric or propane. Uh, so pushing any button again will illuminate the screen. Right now we have it on the auto setting, which gives the electricity priority over the propane. But you can have it set to run solely off electric or solely off propane if you want. Otherwise, switching it back to auto, being plugged in as we are right now, will give the electrical system priority over the propane. 
Then over here, this is your temperature adjust. It goes in between one and nine. One being the uh, least cool and nine being the coldest. Double doors right here. And you do have two ice cube trays as well in the freezer. And here you do have your power recliners. They do have uh, remote storage inside there. But then uh, here you can raise and lower the legs. They do also have heat and massage settings on there. And then these other couches on the side do fold out to make a bed. Simply remove the two side cushions. Fold out the legs. Set that down there. And simply fold back the couch down there. Then for uh, the lights inside the slide room, you do have a wall switch. Same for the other slide room. And then here at your ent entertainment center, you have the TV and you do have the radio. Now on the radio, you do have a slot where you can play CDs or DVDs, um, also USB and auxiliary ports. This does also have Bluetooth capabilities and uh, these a, B, and C are for your different zones of speakers. Uh, speaker A are going to be your living room speakers. Uh, speaker B are going to be the garage speakers. And then C are going to be your outdoor speakers. And then not only can you operate the fireplace with the remote, but you can also operate it with the buttons right on the face of the fireplace. You can change color. And you can have uh, different temperatures set anywhere from 64 all the way up to 82 degrees. And you can also have a timer set uh, anywhere from a half hour all the way up to eight hours. Um, otherwise with no timer set, it will just run until you turn it off. And then in this cabinet here, this is where all of your fuses and breakers are located. So all the breakers are a standard uh, 110 resettable breaker. And then all of your fuses here are the, uh, the standard size ATC automotive fuse. And if any of these fuses blow out, you will have a little red LED light next to it, letting you know which fuse has actually blown out. Then over here, you do have your central vac system. You do have on off switch here, and then you do have a replaceable bag inside of here. Simply pull this lever and the bag is located here. And you do also have a cleanable filter located here as well. And it does have an arrow on it pointing which way it's designed to go in. You do have the vacuum attachments and hoses here. And then right around the corner here, you do have your carbon monoxide and propane leak detector. And this is hardwired into the camper. So as long as your camper has power, this will have power as well. Uh, there's no battery backup for this. It relies solely on the camper power. Then right up here, again, this is uh, just a solar monitor. 
essentially nothing that you have to do with it is more or less there uh, for your observation. Next we're going to go over the touch panel. This here is the home screen which gives you a basic overview of many of the different items. Um, it gives you your water tank levels here. Um, it gives you uh, temperatures for each of your three zones for HVAC. And if you select a device as a favorite device, it will uh, highlight the icon over here on the side. So that way you can quickly activate uh, you know, whichever device you're trying to use uh, without needing to go specifically into the devices menu. But as we do go into the devices menu here, it brings up more in-depth op options for each device. First setting is awnings. The top one is going to be the main awning uh, over the, uh, the front entry door. Awning two is going to be uh, the awning over the rear entry door. And then the patio awning will be the awning over the ramp. Um, now you can push the buttons here, but if you specifically select uh, one item, it will bring up larger icons which are easier to press. Uh, the plus sign will be to extend, and the minus sign will be to retract. Um, when the awning is retracting, it will simply stop when it gets to the end, or you know, gets back to the camper. Uh, but when you're running the awning out, there is no stopper for the, the main awnings one and two uh, when it gets to the end of the roll. And if you were to continue to press the plus sign, once the awning has gotten to the end of the roll, it would start to roll up backwards. It's not going to break off and roll away, but it will start to roll off backwards, or roll up backwards, um, exposing the clean white underside of the awning to all the dirt and everything on top. So now we'll back out of the awnings. Next section will be your generator. Or again, you can uh, turn the generator on off. You can also select uh, auto start and quiet hours. Some campgrounds uh, you know, don't allow you to have uh, generators going during certain hours. So you can set that there. You also have HVAC controls which allows you to select between the bedroom, the garage, or your main living room climate zones. From here, you can select your temperature, go down to source, and from there, you can select heat only for furnace, cool only for air conditioning, or heat and cool for somewhat of an automatic setting. And then this will just make sure that everything is turned back off. Next, we have the leveling controls. Again here, this is a, uh, an internal level inside the brain box, which that will allow you to um, kind of use that to determine where level is on the camper. Uh, you can also use a carpenter's level uh, laying on the floor. That's also a very good indicator of where level is. Now here, they also have um, options as you do outside on your touchpad uh, for auto level, for hitch height, uh, you can level it manually with this selection here. Uh, retract all jacks again to reset and you do have some advanced options. Which again, you can re-zero and uh, you know, highlight uh, trouble codes if there ever is an error. Next, you have uh, the light setting, which will bring up all of the lights, and that will tell you, you know, what lights are on or not. Um, accent lights, those are going to be the lights up above the, uh, the cabinets in the kitchen. 
awning lights, that's going to be the LED strips by awning one and two. Uh, you do also have uh, front cap lights, those are going to be orange LED strips on the front cap. Uh, then you have the hallway light here above the touchpad, living room lights, and then the ramp door light. Next we have your monitor panel selection here. And this again will allow you to turn on and off the water pump. And then it will also show you uh, each of your holding tanks. Now as a holding tank fills up, uh, there will be uh, kind of a bluish gray bar inside this, uh, this shadowed uh, dark blue bar that uh, will you know, keep increasing as the water in uh, whichever specific tank that you're using. Um, so it'll just be a little bar graph there. Go back. And then the slide room's right here. So you have the option for a bedroom slide or the main slide. Again, both of the slide rooms in the uh, main living room area. Um, they will both go in at, at about the same time, um, unless of course you had one of the valves outside closed in the battery compartment as we talked about before. Other than that, those are all the uh, device um, icons. And then just bring us back to the home screen. This here is going to be the control for your water heater. Now again, your water heater, because it is a tankless water heater, is propane only. This does not use electric or 12 volt at all. Um, so first, again, you want to make sure that your propane is turned on and that you have the power switch outside turned to the on position. From then, you would be able to uh, push the power button here and select your temperature here and here. After that, it's just a on demand or as needed, so it's only going to run when there's a uh, call for hot water. Right down here, you have your light switch and GFI outlet. And then with your shower door latch right there, always make sure that the latch is in the locked position before travel, because if those glass doors break, it will fill up a five gallon shop vac. Now the toilet has a foot flush pedal on the side. So stepping the pedal down about halfway would add water to the bowl uh, without flushing and then stepping the pedal down all the way would flush and rinse. Right, and then you have the bedroom TV here, which again, uh, the remote is in uh, the kitchen by all the rest of the remotes. This is gonna be the thermostat for the, the bedroom AC. This right here is going to be the light switch for the bedroom lights. And then with your pocket door here, you do have a travel lock on there. Again, um, that's just a little shepherd's uh, hook lock that will go right into that slot. Always make sure that you have the door locked before you travel so that way it's not rolling back and forth, uh, banging into the wall, causing damage. Uh, next, over here on the other side, you do have your emergency escape window, and this simply operates by uh, pulling up the lever, pushing that right out. Um, now you see here that you can leave it propped open for regular window use, not simply for escaping from. Um, but if you did have to escape through, you could simply push the rest of this handle out all the way and grab hold of that red tab on the screen, and then the screen is easily removed, and you could escape from there. Other than that, just have a few other things that we want to show you. And that'll be over here in this corner. You do have USBs for charging. You do have a regular outlet and you do have your bed lift switch. Uh, now when raising and lowering the bed, I would recommend uh, not being on the bed so that, that way there's not excess pressure. Um, but then you can simply raise and lower the bed. Just like that, and again to lower it. Now the blind up here, this is a simple pull style shade. Uh, simply uh, 
you know, grab on to the uh, support bar on the bottom and you can lower that. And then to bring it back up, you simply raise it up there. 